First, I just want to start off by saying thank you to you guys for welcoming us to Nebraska. My family's here. We're enjoying it. It's a dream come true for me, and uh, I'm excited to get to work. Uh, my grandma will probably kill me right now because I don't have a haircut for this, but i um, just been grinding, and the players been grinding. I look forward to working with those guys, and uh, I'm excited about building relationships with you guys and uh, you know, getting this thing back on track. So uh, ask away anything. Uh, I enjoy this part of it. If you would, just kind of introduce yourself to coach if you ask questions, too. Hey, Terrence. Luke Mullen from Lincoln Journal Star. Just curious, you know, when you're talking to recruits out there, how important has your, you know, your time in the NFL been, you know, talking to them about having been there, you know, done that? I think it's something that it's important to talk about. You know, all the kids have admirations of playing in the NFL and, you know, being a guy who's played in the NFL and, you know, played on really good teams and played with a lot of Hall of Famers. Uh, they always ask about those experiences. And, um, you know, I have no problem using that as, you know, recruiting bait or, you know, just as regular conversation. So, um, you know, football has given me and my family everything, you know, that we have. And, um, you know, for a lot of kids I recruit, football is their way out. So uh, it shows that I'm also more relatable and uh, I've been in their situation and, um, it's an easy conversation. You know, it's an easy conversation because I understand them and I've been in their shoes. And uh, I always tell them, don't, you know, never mind the gray hairs. That's just from a lot of, you know, recruiting and coaching. But, um, you know, I, I can relate to those guys. I'm, you know, I'm only 36 years old, so I'm not that far removed. Mm -hmm. Steve Sipple from HuskerOnline.com. Would you, would you play the game with designs on becoming a coach? Um, honestly, no. What happened was, when I was playing and how I interacted with my teammates and, you know, how I picked up the installs really quick and, you know, how I communicated on the field, a lot of coaches would say, hey, you should be an NFL coach or you should go into coaching or, you know, when you're done, you know, look into internships to be a coach and those type of things. So, um, you know, it's something that, you know, once I was done playing football, I was trying to find another way to be around the game um, and coaching was the way. So, uh, you know, it is. It's done right by me now. So, I'm, like I said, I'm living the dream right now, being in Nebraska. And, um, you know, I want to thank those guys for, you know, playing that seed. And, uh, you know, I look forward to, you know, what it, what it gives me and my family and uh, looking forward to changing some lives. Terrence, Brian Christopherson with Husker 24-7. What's allowed you to hit the ground so fast as a recruiter? I mean, who did, did you kind of study some people when you're getting into coaching and how they did it? Or, or what's allowed you to be successful quickly in it? The, the crazy thing about that is, you know, uh, Coach Rule came to Temple my sophomore year. He was my D-line coach. And the level of urgency that they had as coaches, it changed us as men. So um, this started just from learning from them, how they do things, um, the urgency that they had with the classroom, you know, being in the community, you know, getting in shape, football, everything. And uh, it's just something they instilled in us. And... You know, the time I was at Temple, it wasn't an attractive place to be like it is now. But, um, you know, uh, we were part of the found the building blocks to what it is now. But um, just the urgency that they had and, you know, uh, the way they wanted us to live our life kind of helped us to be successful, whether it was football coaching or working at Apple. It could have been anything. Mm -hmm. Sam, Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Apparel. How are you? Um, just a basic question, like what positions – are you sort of overseeing? Do you see the, oversee the edge rushers? Do you oversee just the interior linemen? How does that, how does that work? Um, right now, we're, we're still trying to figure that out. I know I'll have the edge guys, but Tony's scheme is a little different than it has been in the past here. And uh, we're still trying to figure out if that fourth guy is a linebacker, DN. We don't know, and that's kind of going to work to our advantage. So we're still figuring that out. And, you know, hopefully – once, you know, when we figure that out, hopefully other teams won't figure that out until Saturday. So, Can you, can you talk about the transfers, or, or is that not something that's under your purview yet? Uh, as far as what? Uh, the player from Georgia, the player from Florida, they mm -hmm. signed. They, so well, as, 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 as people, they're great human beings. You know, that's what we look for first. Um, you know, we the football will handle itself. But if you're not a guy that's representing the program the right way on and off the field, then uh, we have no interest. You know, whether you're a five-star guy or one-star guy, you got to do things the right way and do them Coach Rule's way. And it's proven to be successful. And, um, 
You know, it's a lot of guys on the staff who's played for him, worked for him, and have some type of relationship with him. So we believe in the process. We believe in, you know, what he's preaching, and uh, it's, it's going to work. So we got to make sure we have the right guys that are around that are going to buy in. And then uh, just from the football aspect, you know, if they're here as a football player and we feel like they can help us, you know, um, you know, they're here for a reason. They're here for that reason. So, um, you know, they got to have a certain skill set, um, a certain, you know, work ethic about them. And um, that's pretty much all you need. And um, if you can do that part, you know, as an individual, then the coaching, you know, will handle the rest. Hey, Coach, Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you know about Nebraska before you took this job? Have you ever been to Nebraska before, and, and what have you learned in, in just a, a couple months now? Um, so my first time coming to Nebraska was a year ago. Uh, my fiance's birthday, we came out here for a concert, and it was really cold in February. And, um, you know, we were like, well, at least we can say we've been in Nebraska. And then uh, now I'm back here again. But um, growing up, you know, uh, Nebraska was always a school I admired. All the great players that have been here, obviously all the national championships in the 90s. Um, you know, I tell kids all the time that don't know, you know, when I was growing up, Nebraska was the Alabama, the Georgia, you know, um, and that's where we're trying to get it back to. And uh, that's where it deserves to be. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the, you know, it's one of the schools that when you get that offer, it's something that, you know, your, your eyes should light up. You know what I mean? Just like the other schools. So uh, we, we, Coach Rue has a good foundation set as far as like how we're going to go about things on a day-by-day basis. But, um, you know, we, we have the right guys here and they're ready to attack it. So, um, you know, as long as they match, you know, Coach Rue's intensity and our intensity as coaches and exceed those expectations, we'll be fine. What concert? Um, it was a concert. It was like a Jagged Edge, Genuine. It was like a lot of hip-hop, R&B, and um, – because her birthday's February 12th, and it was on February 14th was the concert, was like a Valentine's Day concert. So, uh, you know, February is a tough month, you know, to handle the cold. But, um, you know, I guess I kind of put that energy in our, in our universe, and now we're back in Nebraska, and, you know, we love being here. What did you, uh, what did you notice about the talent you inherited? I mean, what's your assessment of what you walked into? Honestly, bef- you know, when Coach Rue said he was taking the job, he offered me a D-line job. Um, I had no idea what we were going into roster-wise. And uh, just meeting the guys and watching a lot of tape, uh, you know, we're not that far off. And, you, you know, you kind of wonder because you just look at the record and you kind of make a judgment based on the record. But, you know, losing a lot of close games, you know, for me, you know, I feel like that's culture. That's culture in the locker, locker room amongst the players. And, um, you know, that's, that's a direct image of, you know, the leadership. Because, you know, in the fourth quarter, when the game is tight, you want the players to say, hey, we're not losing this game. You want that to come from the players. So, um, you know, it's just developing that mindset during the off season, attacking everything each day, and, um, you know, making Saturdays the easy day of the week. So uh, we're going we're gonna to attack it this off season. Um, the guys are kind of anxious right now because this will be the first time they're around the coaches and, you know, working with us next week. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, seeing what we have as far as a, you know, a toughness standpoint and a competitive standpoint. Amy, just from the Lincoln Journal Star, how did your last couple of years at Carolina help prepare you for this? You know, in the NFL, you meet a lot of different personalities. And, um, you know, when I played, I played with different personalities, but, you know, I didn't have to manage them. So in the NFL, when you have to manage those different personalities, you kind of learn a lot about guys. And whether it's college or the NFL, you know, guys always appreciate if you get to know them on a personal basis. Because sometimes the NFL gets, so you get so caught up in the business side of it and statistical part of it, you know, you forget at the end of the day that some of these guys in the NFL are still kids, you know, and, um, you know, they're used to being highly recruited and, you know, used to hear people hearing good things, you know, used to hearing good things said about them. So now they're in the NFL, you know, one play is a meme or, you know, it's a it's a it's a GIF on Instagram or anything like that. So, just building relationships, just like anything else. And like I said, football always handles itself if you have good coaching and a good culture. But um, I think building those relationships with the people and if they believe in you and um, and they trust you, that'll handle itself. I know you're just in the initial conversations, probably, but what sticks out or early impressions about Tony White's scheme and just you know. Um, good luck. Good luck because it's a lot. 
Um, it's going to be a lot to defend. Um, it's kind of, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to lose some sleep trying to figure out where we're lined up, where guys are lined up, how we're going to attack you. And, um, you know, and you got to have dynamic guys for a scheme like that. So I'm looking forward to learning that, you know, just as much as I am, you know, learning the guys. Because like I said, we've been on the road recruiting. Haven't done much football yet, but we're getting back into the football things now and um, looking forward to hearing his philosophy a little bit more and um, how he envisions our roster. And, you know, once we see the guys move around, I'm looking forward to hearing his, you know, perspective on where guys should line up and how they'll be effective. Uh, you know, Kendi from KTV and all. Mm -hmm. um, first time in the Big Ten, what, what, are your, uh, what do you think about the Big Ten as a conference and, uh, and how is that a fit for you in terms of the style you play and the guys you're going to play? Um, for one, I know that as far as the Big Ten, you're always going to have, you know, teams that are competing for the national championship. So um, the standard is already set, you know, um, and not only just from the other opponents in the conference, but just from what, you know, was built here, the winning tradition, you know, all those things have been set. So uh, there's a standard that we know, you know, Nebraska is going to hold us to, and we're going to um, we're going to meet those standards and try to you know, exceed them as well. And um, like I said, I'm looking forward to those, you know, to rivalry games, you know, um, Black Friday, those type of things. I'm looking forward to those traditions and being a part of it. And, um, and you know, uh, like I said, just something I dreamed about as a kid growing up, watching, trying to be a part of as a player. But now I get to do it as a coach. So, um, you know, I'm excited. Yeah. Where, where did that come from? Uh, and you guys still play that now? You coach uh, so the high school kids, not necessarily. Some of the college kids, still, they still know. But, um, you know, we're, we're coming back from Seattle. It was my rookie year. So obviously as a rookie, I don't have a say on anything. Um, we're coming back from Seattle. They just kicked our butt. It was like 42 to 7 or something like that. And a six-hour flight back to Jacksonville. And, um, you know, the lights are off on the plane. And the flight attendant comes around, asks everybody what they want for dinner. And it was shrimp alfredo or pot roast. So I don't eat seafood, so shrimp alfredo was out of it. And then pot roast is beef, so that was actually my first time having it. And um, I thought, I'm going to go with the pot roast. So like 10 minutes later, she comes back down the aisle. She's like, pot roast, pot roast. And I lean over. I'm like, right here, right here. And my teammate behind me, who's kind of like the comedian of the team, Clint Ingram, um, you know, he was like, man, you said that like that was your name. And, you know, the, the certain guys on the team you know not to get started and stay away from. So I'm like, whatever. And I go, you know, I eat my food, go back to sleep. And the next day I'm doing media and talking to the media about how we just, you know, gave 150 yards rushing and all that. And I see him walking over and I'm like, oh, man, here we go. And he was like, hey, from now on, y'all call him pot roast. And obviously they asked about it, ran with it. And. You know, once it hit Twitter and everyone liked it, it stuck with me. And, you know, big man needs a nickname. So, you know, you probably hear a lot of stories. I ate all the pirates on the plane. That's not true. That's that's really the story. That's really the story of how it happened. So, um, you know, it stuck with me. And then when I went to Denver, when I signed up as a free agent there, I tried to get rid of the name and say, hey, why don't y'all come up with something? And the Bronco fans are like, no, Pyros is going to stay. So it stuck with me, and I'm still Pyros now. So I enjoy it. Being a good pass rusher, whether you're an edge guy or an interior guy, what, what's important about being good at that? And what, when you've been on good defenses, both as a player and a coach, what, what do they do well? Um, you know, as far as players, there's always different ways to get to a pass to the quarterback. You know, playing with Von Miller, you know, he's a guy that God took his time and you know created. You know, he just has a special ability to, you know, he's flexible. Um, to bend around the edge, his get off, those type of things are like second to none. And then you play with great players like Aaron Campman. Um, you know, I know he's an Iowa guy, but you know he's a, he's a great player. But um, you know, a guy I respected that you know didn't have all the flexibility, didn't have all the you know God given talent, but worked at his hands, his feet. You know, worked at his craft. So there's different things that you look for, but initially you just hope you got a guy who athletically can burst off the ball, has the ability to be flexible, and then the rest of it you can coach. The rest of it you can coach. When people ask you uh, what's it like to work for Coach Rule, mm -hmm. what comes to mind? 
Accountability. Accountability. Um, he's not a head coach. He's not going to be the last guy in. He's not going to be the first guy out. Um, you know, it's a competitive staff, honestly, to me. Um, and when I say that, I mean, like, we're all trying to outwork each other, which helps. You know, nobody wants to be the weak link. Nobody wants to be outworked by another coach or position group. And uh, Coach Rue kind of sets that tone because you know how much he works and you know how much he believes and what he believes in, how much time he puts into that and how much time he puts in the players. So, you know, at times I sit back and admire how he's able to balance being a head coach, being a father, you know, you know, helping us young coaches develop those type of things like and still remember every single recruit that, you know, that he's interacted with in the past two months. So, you know, he, he's a special guy for that reason. And um, like I said, it's admirable. And I think that's why we have the staff that we have and everybody's going to work because we all see that every single day. So it sets the tone. The staff, with the exception of a couple, is fairly young. Um, mm -hmm. What has that chemistry been like as y'all are, some of you have existing relationships, but as you come together as this staff? You enjoy what you do. You, I mean, I come to work every day and I enjoy being here. Um, Evan Cooper, me and him were college roommates. You know, Adam DeMichael, you know, uh, Omar Hales, we all played together. So it's a, it's a special bond that we've been developed. And, um, you know, when Coach Rule is coaching us, so um, he's seen us grow into young men, see us grow into fathers, grow into husbands. And, you know, um, we understand him, we get him, we know exactly what he wants. And, um, you know, I think that's why he hired how he hired, you know, just having the right people around him, um, people that are going to put the players first. Um, put winning first and uh, put any agendas or selflessness to the side just so we can do what we have to do to win. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, guys.